finished with the Matthew Library at Cambridge University. I'm happy to librarian, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you what an annotated bibliography is and how to create one for your history and culture of Finland assignment. So I suggest that you review your syllabus and assignment instructions thoroughly. You will be working on this assignment throughout the semester, and it's important that you understand exactly what is required. Your professor, Dr. Vertinen, has instructions for this assignment available through eCollege. There you can find examples of various citations, such as citing a website or a movie. You can also see examples of annotations. A handout created by the library, which includes sample annotations, will also be available on eCollege. So all of you are probably familiar with creating a bibliography for research papers um, that you did in high school. Bibliographies are also called a works cited page or a reference page. So what is the difference between a bibliography and an annotated bibliography? So the definition from the Dictionary of Information and Library Management says it is a bibliography with notes. The definition of an annotated bibliography seems simple, just add notes. But the clarity of the writing and information provided in the notes is important. They provide a summary of the item, but they go a step further than an abstract or a description by also giving analytical information. A notation should tell you not only what is in the item, but also its value for research. I will show you specific examples later on. What will your finished annotated bibliography look like? <clears throat> you will set up your paper just like you would for any MLA formatted assignment. Your name, class name, and section, professor's name and date will be in the upper left hand corner. There is a running header in the upper right hand corner. That includes your last name and the page number. When you set up your header, make sure to put in the page number first, then add your last name to the left of the page number. The title of your annotated bibliography is centered and capitalized. You could name the title after the subject of your bibliography. Then you have your first citation in alphabetical order and immediately following the citation are your notes. Your notes are indented and there is not an extra space between the citations. The entire document is double spaced and it is in Times New Roman and 12 font. The indentation is half of an inch, which is the standard tab spacing, so you can use the tab key. The purpose for an annotated bibliography is to provide researchers with an organized, comprehensive list of materials on a particular subject. Bibliographies in general help researchers identify major works that are considered important for their subject area. They also eliminate the need for for performing a review of the literature by each person interested in researching that subject. The materials might include many forms, including websites, journals, podcasts, and even documentaries. The annotations also include analytical information so the researcher can distinguish which items may be the most useful. Perhaps the researcher is looking for great photographs, maps, or primary sources on a particular subject. When a bibliography is comprehensive and contains materials from around the world, the researcher can explore materials that are beyond her own library. The researcher may be interested in a bibliography because they want to know where there are gaps of information for a certain subject. So this can help determine areas that need more study or could be researched. There are many uses for bibliographies and many types of bibliographies. Some bibliographies are created by and for the local library. Some annotated bibliographies are based around a particular subject, a geographical area, language group, time period, or a specific author or group of authors. Creating an annotated bibliography for a class assignment allows for the student to use research skills to locate the materials, show that the student understands the topic, and is also a good way to practice academic level writing. Writing an annotated bibliography allows for both summary and evaluation of materials without the format of a research paper. There are a variety of bibliographies on almost every subject imaginable. Let's look at a few examples. 
The second book listed here is The New Religions of Japan, a bibliography of Western language materials. The last book listed, Nathaniel Hawthorne's Scarlet Letter, a research guide and annotated bibliography of literary criticism from 1950 to 2000. So this is a good example of how the subject of an annotated bibliography could be very specific. These examples are published books, but there are also bibliographies that libraries or others create that are not published in a book form. For example, the library has a copy of Portals to the Past, a bibliographical and resource guide to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. This was created by the Center for UP Studies in Marquette. What's particularly useful about this bibliography is that it not only includes books and magazine articles, but also master and PhD thesis and self-published works. So after you have identified all the materials available to you on a given subject, decide which ones would be best for your bibliography. Try not to narrow your subject down too much because you want your work to be useful to others researching in the same area. While reviewing the materials, do not directly rely on the table of contents, abstract, or description of the item. Peruse the item, read some sections of the book or article so that you have an idea about the quality of work. You will need to evaluate the item, so learn enough about it to make an informed evaluation. Taking notes is critical for this assignment because you don't want to be constantly revisiting the materials as you write your notation. There is a variety of materials for you to use for this assignment. Books, journals, articles, films, websites, news articles. To find resources available in the Mackey Library, look at the Mackey Library website under Tutorials in the right-hand side menu. There are several quick tutorials on how to find books, journal articles, and also videos from the Mackey Library. So a note on note. The next step after understanding the assignment is taking quality notes. The quality of, your, of the notes you take during the semester will have the largest influence on the quality of your finished annotated bibliography. Consider the following when taking notes. Who is the author? What is the author's background? Are they a leader in the field? Do they have a bias that should be considered? What are the author's credentials? Who is the audience for this work? Is it the general population or scholars within the fields of study? What is covered in the material? What is the quality of the material? Is there original research or are they talking about others' theories and research? Is there something special about this work compared to others on the same subject? Maybe there is a great translation of a primary source that you have only seen summarized in other places. Or maybe it contains the original language and a translation. What makes this work worth researching? The next step of the assignment is to set up your paper. So you can start formatting your paper according to your assignment first. Set up the font, font size and margins, spacing, etc. You can also use the Word Reference tab to set up your bibliography. The tool will then format your citations for you. More information is given in your handout about using Word Reference. It will save you time and frustration if you create your citations throughout the semester instead of waiting until the end of the semester and creating all of your citations at once. So writing your annotation. Your writing should be clear, direct, and use the proper terminology for your subject. Use your notes for reference and try not to look at the abstracts or summaries at the same time that you are writing your annotation. Use your own words to avoid plagiarism. Make sure that your notation is more than a summary and contains some critical analysis of the subject. Here is the example from Purdue OWL. You will notice that the first paragraph is a summary, the next is an evaluation of the material, and the last paragraph talks about how the work could be applied in research. So I'm going to read this annotation since it is a wonderful example. <clears throat> so Anne Lamott, Bird by Bird, Some Instructions on Writing and Life. 
Lamont's book offers honest advice on the nature of a writing life, complete with its insecurities and failures. Taking a humorous approach to the realities of being a writer, the chapters in Lamont's books are wry and anecdotal and offer advice on everything from plot development to jealousy, from perfectionism to struggling with one's own internal critic. In the process, Lamont includes writing exercises designed to be both productive and fun. Lamont offers sane advice for those struggling with the anxieties of writing, but her main project seems to be offering the readers a reality check regarding writing, publishing, and struggling with one's own imperfect humanity in the process. Rather than a practical handbook to producing and or publishing, this text is indispensable because of its honest perspective, its down-to-earth humor, and its encouraging approach. Chapters in this text could easily be included in the curriculum for a writing class. Several of the chapters in Part 1 address the writing process and would serve to generate discussion on students' own drafting and revising processes. Some of the writing exercises would also be appropriate for generating classroom writing exercises. Students should find Lamont's style both engaging and enjoyable. So again, that first paragraph was a summary, the second was an evaluation, and the third described application for research or for further use. Even if you are using word references or a citation tool such as the Son of Citation Machine, or the OWL Lab, Purdue OWL Lab, you are still responsible for making sure that your citations are in MLA format. Note that we are using the 7th edition. For further information on format citations, you can look under the Research Guide and Tutorials web link um, for links to the Purdue OWL Lab. Remember that you can call us, email, or stop by the library anytime for help with any of your research assignments. Thank you.